Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk News Extra. I am Lou Curran. This is El Fakador Laurie Blake. We thought we'd do this extra news episode because mm-hmm. there was just too much news from the weekend. Too many news, too many stuffs. Too many news. Too many things. Too many news for Ollie Davis's news episode because he was focusing on the Matt Hardy trying to get out of the Matt Hardy, trying to get out of his the WWE contract. Mm-hmm. We didn't have time to talk about another person who might be trying to get out of their WWE contract. The Luke Harper trying to get out of his the WWE contract. The exactly. Contract. Exactly. And the controversy over the weekend involving mm. the Sandman and a lady person main event at a Wrestle Cage show, which Tessa Blanchard and Jordan Grace were particularly very upset about. But we'll get to that in a moment. Let's first talk about Luke Harper looking to possibly leave WWE. Since forever. Yeah, well, yes, pretty much. Since, yeah. Yeah, this has been. Since a... time immemorial, the world has moved on. In many different facets, but not this. But Luke not Luke Harper this. still wants to go. <laughs> Indeed he does. Yeah, this has been brewing for quite <laughs> some time, but there's been an update to this story. According to PW Insider, on um, November 26th, WWE star Luke Harper applied to trademark the name Brody Lee for, this is where we get into legal mumbo jumbo, legal mumbo jumbo, IC025 US022039 G and S shirt, and oh, no, well. IC041 US101 G and S entertainment services, namely wrestling exhibits and performances by a professional wrestler and entertainer. Mm -hmm. So this is very much Luke Harper trademarking his old indie name, Brody Lee, because he's going. Yeah, just in case they sign someone and give them the name Brody Lee and trademark it before he leaves. (laughs) (laughs) So yes, I mean, this pretty much all but confirms that Harper's off. Yeah. That once Harper's contract, his extended contract ends, he is out the door. You would have to imagine he would want to, though. Like, it's, it's that sort of like, you want, I mean, you have to get to a certain point of pissed off to ask for your release anyway. Yeah. And then to be denied it, given more time to your contract, and then nothing to do. You must just be sitting there going, why, why do you even want me here? Yeah, you are like, keeping me you, prisoner. You're paying me to punish me. Yeah, it's rumored that his contract is going to end in summer 2020, the extended version of that contract. So, AEW, maybe Ring of Honor, Impact. Maybe. There's a, there's a lot of places for mm-hmm. for and like. You've got to imagine that people will be chomping at the bit to sign Brody Lee. There was a WrestleCage show over the weekend with the main event was supposedly going to be Jordan Grace versus Tessa Blanchard versus Tyre Valkyrie versus Rosemary, but uh, unfortunately Tessa Blanchard was injured and she was replaced by Sue Young. So that was going to be the main event of the show, and it was the main event of the show. Mm-hmm. However, the Impact Women's Division. Exactly, yeah. yeah. However... Jordan Grace tweeted out, um, I think I believe it was either during the show or after the show, hey, remember that time the Sandman came up to four women about to main event to tell us that women main eventing is, quote, wrong, and, quote, any male wrestler with any sort of experience would agree, end quote. Was this in 1998? No, it was tonight, December 2019. Oh, dearie me. Yeah, that is... That's bold. So it turns out that Sandman's new gimmick is he's a YouTube comment. <laughs> yeah, he's a troll. Yeah. <laughs> Enter troll man. <laughs> it's I just... I mean, it's a bit of a pathetic comment, really, oh, when, totally, considering yeah. that WrestleMania was headlined by women. Uh, like... The last uh, pay-per-view we just had the Survivor last Series. Pay-per-view was just, and, like, I, you know, I would argue that, that maybe that shouldn't have been the main event at Survivor Series because it, it felt flat compared to some of the other matches at Survivor Series. But that is a scheduling question and not a question of well it's because they're women yeah it, it's more a sort of like you've already reached the high point of the show by having the men's match here this feels like a high point of the show it's like a really good selection of people in a match it's like it's a shame that tessa wasn't in the match but like Sue young is an admirable replacement and i think that's a, like that would be a really entertaining combination of people to watch completely watching sandman what, bring a kendo stick in? Ooh. Yeah, like, I was going to say. I don't care. Getting that nostalgia pop yeah, just, from 30 years ago. He's an entrance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, um, it's, yeah, it's a real sad state of affairs to kind of be in that position because to WWE's credit, and I will always credit them for this, they have made women main eventing their pay-per-views feel like it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Like it's just like, it is a standard of a WWE yep. show if women are the main events. And I think that's actually, it's really admirable that they've managed to do that. And to Impact's credit, they've also managed to do that. Their whole Tessa Blanchard, Sammy Callahan storyline has been one of the best told stories mm-hmm. of the year. So Tessa main eventing their next pay-per-view, challenging Sammy for the title, feels completely legit. Yep. It's really, it's AEW's biggest failing is their women's division currently. Mm-hmm. So then for Sandman to say in 
2019, you know, Tesla says in her promo 2020, and you know, essentially is 2020 at this point, that to still hold that ass, that that ideal that well, women can't main event a show. Any real man with years of experience would tell you the same thing is pretty much ludicrous at this point. Yeah, well, I remember when he was popular, that was it definitely was the case. Well, so but, it was an ECW. Yeah, there were no like, women there unless yeah, they were there to but, show their tits. Well, exactly. But I guess that's the that's the thing is like is having that view from years ago that you've never moved on. Um, Tessa then got in the ring. Uh, after the match and cut a promo. Yeah, it was just before the match because she was oh, there. It was just when before the match. Was, she, oh, was there. she was there to introduce Sue Young. That's that's, that's right. Yeah, because it really made me laugh because so Jordan Grace was the first person to uh, to tweet about this to be like, hey, here's what you mm. know, here's what's up, and then a lot of people got onto Jordan's back, being like, well, that's just your word against his. Like, yeah. you, Sandman's not here to defend himself. He's not saying anything about it. And then, yeah, someone posted up this video of Tessa Blanchard going like, here's what happened. Yeah. yeah. And I was in the back earlier tonight. And I had to listen to an old ECW guy that used to have a beer in his, in his hand talk about how women shouldn't be main eventing this event or any event. And then that led to him saying that it's not because he didn't have faith in these women, but because he didn't have faith in you fans. So yeah, so this got a, a lot of heat on on Sandman, who, like, for the record, is, has only ever really come off as a nice guy. Like, I've watched a lot of shoot interviews with the Sandman. He's a very, very intelligent person, a very, very wise man. Because his whole gimmick is that you know I'm this drunkard man with the kendo stick and the beer cans. But actually, when you watch him in interviews, he's so articulate and intelligent. He's a very, very good property guy as well. Like, I swear, he's really made all of his money is through property. So it's kind of sad to see him with that sort of 1998 mentality 20 years on. Mm. So it's a bit of a shame, really. Yeah, it's like, um, yeah, I don't think the, the car, even the expanding upon it and saying, well, it's the fans and not, not the fact that women shouldn't be, read, like, that becomes a bit silly. Like, I'm sure there are financial conversations to have, have about, like, advertising a women's main event for a show and whether yeah. or not that compares to men in the main event of a show and, like, whether that's a bigger draw and what makes more money, but... Realistically, women's main events are brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. And have been fantastic. And if you are a fan and you don't think women should be main eventing, you're an idiot. Yeah, that Survivor Series <laughs> main event notwithstanding. Yeah. Because it wasn't that good a match. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a really good but story but going paper, in. The proposition yeah, of absolutely. the match was very exciting. Like, I would have, like, knowing that, going into the show, knowing that was the main event, I would have been excited for the match. Completely. In the same way, there's been plenty of main events that I've been excited for that fell flat. Uh, Fiend Seth Rollins. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, you know, it's not unique to them. Yeah, absolutely, it's not unique to them. Um, and it appears that Jordan Grace and Tessa and everyone, they weren't the only ones upset by this. A few other people got involved. Chris Jericho, uh, AEW champion, uh, tweeted, I don't agree um, with the Sandman. I'm sure he wasn't saying he doesn't agree with Jordan Grace's position on this. Yeah. <laughs> You'd hope so. You'd hope so. <laughs> uh, Madison Rain uh, of Impact said, Gross, I hope he stuck around to see the match and eat his words. Uh, Will Ospreay said, Really? Uh, most of the women wrestlers are pulling off more innovative and exciting stuff that the ever before. Will, Will's not the most articulate man in the world. Um, can't tell you the amount of times I go to a stardom match and want to retire because their matches are insane. Let's not interfere with progress. Everyone keep killing it. Shazza McKenzie said, I, dot, 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 am speechless. Mm -hmm. And Melissa Santos said, what the F, dot, 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 wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think what the F is the only real response is to Absolutely, be like, yeah. well, you're here and you were booked lower than this, yeah. so please be aware. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've had a, had 20 years of Enter Sandman, now it feels like, get out Sandman. Yeah, please, Sandman, please. Go e exit now. Back in your box. <laughs> Well, that is all we've got time for on this edition of Wrestle Talk News Extra. Let us know if you enjoyed this sort of format. Maybe we'll do some more of it because often there are times where we can't get every news story uh, done in the day. So this might be a new fun way for us to do that. Uh, click the videos that have just appeared on screen right now. Let us know in the comments below what you think of both of these new stories and where you'd like to see Luke Harper go. Do you think the Sandman was right in his comments? Obviously, he was wrong. Uh, and give us a subscribe and support the channel. I've been Luke Owen. This has been El Fakador, Laurie Blake. And that was wrestling.